Hi. Just finished recording a podcast with Ashok Kirthi, who is a researcher at the University of Manchester, and he's researching on graphene and the the, the beautiful tunnels or capillaries that are made in these one or two or three layers of graphene, which is the carbon atoms uh, arranged in a honeycomb lattice and how uh, how these are created and about Ashok's journey in, in science, the research journey. And uh, yeah, we talked about a lot of interesting things. So can't wait for you to watch the video. Do consider subscribing and liking the content that we create on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening. Do share it with your friends. Uh, your support means everything to us. Uh, we are a very small channel uh, run by volunteers, so please, please, please uh, do share and uh, interact and watch the entire video. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I am Pranoti, your host of Under the Microscope podcast. And today we have an amazing guest with us. And I'm totally not biased when I say this because he is also working on graphene. Uh, so, yeah, we have Ashok Kirti, who is a presidential fellow at the University of Manchester in England. By the way, Manchester is also the birthplace of graphene um, and all of that. So, yeah, welcome, Ashok. Uh, welcome to the podcast um thank you pranati thank you very much uh before i get started with the with the science itself i do have a question for you what is a presidential fellow what, what like do you get like do you shake hands with the president on a regular basis or what does it mean right that's very interesting um so the presidential in in the uk uh, we have two streams for the assistant professor uh, uh, level so one is more, mostly a research based uh, assistant professorships the other is research plus uh, teaching so the presidential fellow is a kind of research fellow route which is mm -hmm. equivalent to assistant professor uh, in broader context mm -hmm. but, uh, mostly focusing on the research side with a uh -huh. minimal amount of teaching so yeah uh -huh. so you can completely focus on the research and you do not have to uh think too much about the teaching part the majority of the time goes to the research and we, we do still uh, participate in teaching okay okay excellent excellent uh that sounds actually very cool so okay ashok uh, please explain your research to us in super simple words please i mean we were talking earlier and i think your research is super fascinating so tell our followers what your research is all about what you're doing right now right so i think let's let's let me start with uh, the the famous example what manchester is known for yeah mm -hmm. so you know the graphite uh, how the manchester gave birth to the graphene just peeling one layer of the graphene from the graphite crystal right and that's how the graphene is invented and the nobel prize is presented mm -hmm. and so that's all the story which is now progressing the 2d materials research but right. now come uh, in manchester what we were doing um instead of removing from the uh, you know, on the surface of the 2D crystal mm -hmm. and removing one layer of 2D material. So if we are removing something from the middle of the crystal and making such kind of tunnels, mm -hmm. these are atomic scale tunnels. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I remove one layer of the graphene from the graphite crystal, so right. I will be just making a tunnel, which is only one atom thick. So mm -hmm. one atom, one layer is missing. That is 3.4 angstroms, the thickness of the graphene. Mm -hmm. So essentially making such kind of capillaries in the 2D materials mm -hmm. and we wanted to study the molecular transport of filtrations using such atomic scale capillaries. Oh my god that is so cool. So you're basically digging nano tunnels um, in the in like a graphite stack you do nano or is there like a number of layers that you have like a particular number of graphene layers or is it like do you take a stack of graphite? Right. Um, yes, that's um, a, a, a trick which is again um, well known in 2D materials research now when may people make uh, different 2D materials stacking them together. So the, 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 the term which is used is heterostructures, van der Waals heterostructures is the, uh, is the term in 2D mm -hmm. materials. So right. we're using a similar technique but right. stacking three crystals 
uh, together. Uh, in the middle crystal, we are making such kind of uh, uh, ribbons of a 2D material and then keeping those ribbons as a middle layer, spacer layer between the top and bottom crystal, uh -huh. putting them together to end up with such kind of 2D tunnels. Ah, so it's this kind of is exactly, Yeah, this is exactly looks like you removing one layer from the middle of the crystal and making such capillaries. Oh my God, so you start with the first, let's say, I don't know, for like, I, this is a very bad example, probably you take a slice of bread, which is the bottom layer, then you have, let's say, like a tomato slice or whatever, and then on top you have the bread, and then you remove the tomato, uh, but the two, oh my God, this is so cool. I thought, oh my God, I was wondering how you see it. That's exactly what we're doing. So for example, this is a 2D crystal, you peel it off and then make a, a slice which is as a bottom layer right. and then just take one layer of graphene or other 2d material and pattern that into a, a ribbons uh -huh. and uh -huh. then you place on top of the uh, the bottom layer right then you put another top layer so that you have two spaces sitting right and you create such kind of tunnels that is so cool yeah. oh my and god this and then you close with another one. Oh my you god this made is so cool and what is the gap? Uh, is there like, a, have you played with the gap, like, the, or let's say the height of the tunnel? Uh. <laughs> yes. So yes, because now you're placing this mechanically together, right? In a, in a very simple manner. So you have a control on how many spacer layers you want to keep in. You take a monolayer graphene, hmm. which is essentially a 3.4 angstroms in thickness. But 3.4 angstroms, that would be 0 0.34 nanometers, correct? Yes, exactly. That's right. So it's... Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> one nanometer. Now we are in a lower than nanometer regime. Right. right? So if you, nanometer. Wow. if you multiply those layers in the middle, like let's say you take two layers of graphene spacer. Correct. And that is 6.8 angstroms. Correct. More than half. Uh, this is very thick, I must say. Um. <laughs> so yeah, we can control with the with the multiple multiples of three point four angstroms or point three four angstroms to n n number of uh, spaces that you want. So you can precisely have a nano structure, a nano tunnel, or nano capillary. Uh, that is so cool. So based on the application, if there is like a uh, like uh, like someone walking, then the height is different. If there is a car, the height is higher, like bigger or higher. And yeah. if there is a truck, then you have a high. Oh my God! That yeah. sorry, I'm just going with like sandwiches and tunnels and everything. No, that, that, that's that's, <laughs> that's uh, very relevant. That's exactly what we're doing. So it's like now you're controlling such traffic, molecular traffic, right? By increasing the barrier height. Wow. If you only want the uh, the cycles or, you know, the pedestrians, then you lower it down and then say only these allowed. Ah, and that is amazing. Do that at the molecular scale. That is so cool. And everyone who's listening to the podcast only, please, please check out the video on Spotify or on YouTube where Ashok showed his models and it's, you will get it instantly if you haven't had a chance to, uh, if you can't visualize the nano tunnels so far, please watch the YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube video on the Science Talk uh, YouTube channel. And yeah, oh my God, this is so fascinating. Okay, Ashok, now I want to know more. So how did you end up um, being the nano uh, tunnel creator and moderator or however I call it, how did you end up basically as a presidential fellow at the University of Manchester? How did that happen? Tell me about your journey, please. Well, wow. um, um, <laughs> yes, so it's a bit unconventional way I end up here. Um, so basically, I'm a chemist. I trained, by, uh, trained as a chemist. I studied till my master's in India. And then I did my PhD in uh, synthetic organic chemistry uh, in Singapore, National, National uh, University of Singapore. Um, so then I did my postdoc, first postdoctoral research in Germany, uh, Max Planck Institute for Polymer Research. So again, I was working on polymers and macromolecules, again, um, also on the graphene nano structures. So the, those are like um, a fragments of graphene. You take a graphene sheet and cut it into a small fragments. So we used to make such 
nanographings from the bottom up approach like let's say take one ring that is a uh, you know equivalent to one benzene ring few rings together you fuse the rings as you want and then you make a nanostructure precisely so that's what my background is by when i came to manchester so i was completely into a different side of the graphene taking a graphene graphite bulk crystals and to create such kind of um and then angstrom capillaries with uh, the very talented scientists here oh wow okay so you are the definite you are the poster boy of a traveling scientist starting your journey in india then singapore then then germany um and now in in england wow you have so much experience i'm so impressed uh that is wow that is really cool that is very very cool so it sounds to me ashok that you have been involved in a lot of interesting research projects uh, i mean That's already lucky, yes yeah <laughs> I'm lucky i'm very lucky to say that yeah 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 i i i can i can imagine so this is a very difficult question you know i know before asking so i'm just giving you a heads up if you have to pick one research project that you're most proud of uh and most fun or quirky one could you pick one research project and explain it to us in simple words in the section we call in other words wow um I, <laughs> this is really a difficult question because see uh, my journey it's a, it's is a multidisciplinary i'm started from a chemist to into the physics and interplane in interdisciplinary so i think um difficult for me to choose one but um yeah for the sake of choosing one i will choose one uh, is which Blame is very, very interesting <laughs> to me apart from the other projects so okay. when we created such uh, 2d tunnels uh -huh. so we we wanted to know if these tunnels are open or not because we are just removing one layer from the middle of i mean uh, one layer thick 2d uh, tunnels we we are not very sure if they are fully clean or is anything stuck here it's you no know, we can't go see uh, uh, these exactly. are not like <laughs> a pipes where you can easily inspect yeah so you you need to know if they are very clean or inside there is nothing is stuck so we, we wanted to study uh, the gas transport we just wanted to put some gas molecule from here and then measure from the other side mm -hmm. and we wanted to uh, know if they these are open or not that was an intention Mm -hmm. So when you put a gas molecule such as a helium, which is chemically inert, if well, helium is the one which if you if you inhale it and then you sound okay. funny, that yes. like the it goes like the high pitch. That's helium, right? So that's that's what. Yes, yes. Okay, so, great. So yeah, so, exactly. So. Did the same here. It made some funny uh, observation. I uh, would say uh -huh. scientifically very interesting one, but uh, to say it's very funny. So uh -huh. it went through it, uh, but. how much we you know we know the dimension of this capillary because we made it now we know exactly how much size is it and we can right. compute back using a uh, known theorems and mm. we know some x amount has to come but right. it has come 100 times the x right correct that was again uh, very intriguing why this is coming so much Mm-hmm. What we expect, hundred times more, yeah. Mm. So more so, than. Sorry, so, sorry. So you, uh, according to your calculations, you put in X amount of helium, and you expected X amount to come back, come come out. But actually, what came out was hundred X. Did I? Understand um, correctly? no, that's. Uh, I think. May let me again simplify. <laughs> sorry for that. That's so, okay. Yeah. So it is not the X amount is a, a speed, a flux, a flux uh -huh. rate. right it's supposed to come this much me you know meters per uh it's the velocity with which it should come out coming very fast we right. supposed to come in a in a certain time that whole amount but it is coming very fast like let's say you're throwing a ball through a a pipe yeah you expect to come with a certain velocity of flux at some point but right. if, as you throw here it just outside the other side oh so that means it is not feeling the length of the exactly mm -hmm. it is not feeling the length of the uh, tunnel Mm -hmm. just throw here and then you see from the other side correct the specular reflection is just coming out without having any interactions or any friction inside correct it's friction free transport right right so that's why ah. we're seeing a huge flux ah. ah so basically when you put helium on one side inside the capillary because there is no friction it is yeah. accelerated so much that when it comes out it is 100 times the uh, the speed at which you had expected Yeah. Oh wow that is so cool oh my god so not just that your pipe 
your pipe, your yeah. tunnel is clean, but it's also, oh, wow. Yeah, that something is so else is uh, adding there. So because, um, yeah, these are atomically smooth crystal planes. Correct. Okay? So they're yeah. very, very smooth to the helium and helium doesn't feel them as a rough road. So it's like a light specular reflection. You know, you, for example, when you uh, go to a, a nature somewhere in the, uh, in the far uh, in the mountains, right. take, you could see uh, peaks of the mountains uh, very clearly on the lake. Yeah. Right. So that's right. kind of a specular reflection. You see the light exactly uh, uh, in the water surface. Yeah. Correct. But Correct. if the water is disturbed and it's wavy, you don't see the peaks. Correct. So, so that is like a um, uh, that's not specular reflection. Specular reflection is when everything is flat and you could see exact image. Correct. So the light is uh, reflecting with a certain angle. Correct. So exactly, it is happening here it's because of its smoothness. It's uh, mm -hmm. the helium is going as a specular uh, transport wave inside. Oh, are we going to this particle and wave thingy? Is yeah, exactly. This is um, particle and wave duality nature that we could simply. Uh, see that observation at room temperature. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That is That's so a quantum magical. property of a material that can be probed at uh, room temperature. Oh, my God. Well, I can imagine why you picked this as one of your most favorite projects. Let's put it that way. Um, so, uh, okay, before, before we move on, I have one question. So, earlier we discussed that uh, one layer of carbon atoms, which is the graphene, uh, so if the height of your uh, if a height of your uh, nano tunnel is 0 0.3 nanometers, then it's like one layer of graphene. So how big are the helium atoms here? So helium atoms are uh, 2.6 angstroms. So that is 0 0.26. Yeah. Uh, okay, so they can pass even with one uh, layer of graphene, like one. Uh, yes spacer like one layer of graphene uh, uh, atoms as like the spacer layer so to say right exactly so uh -huh. the capillary with um, uh, 0 0.34 angstroms can still allow the helium to pass through right a higher uh, uh -huh. okay all right so okay so you don't need to put like you don't need to increase the height of the tunnel because the helium atoms can just pass through yes um Okay. Wow. This is so cool. This is so cool. Uh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, the, so, so Ashok, after speaking with you, it's very clear to me that you really enjoy the research aspect of being a scientist, but as a, res a presidential fellow, um, there are other aspects of uh, doing science itself, right? So what else do you like about being a scientist? Other than the research aspect and getting your hands dirty, not really dirty, because we are always wearing gloves, guys. Okay, go on. <laughs> right. So, yeah, um, the other side of the my role is um, interacting with the young um, student, undergrads and postgrads in the department. Um, right. So we do also do a, a teaching uh, some extent and tutorials and even we do supervise them in the labs. Um, mm -hmm. Those discussions I really enjoy uh, more with the students. Uh, apart from we have a lot of you know scientific discussions with other colleagues, mm -hmm. scientific <laughs> charts, but uh, yeah. So these two as aspects are very exciting apart from me doing a research in lab. Ah, okay. So the constructive conversations and the brainstorming yeah. that happens. So the, the yeah. interesting thing, students ask very, very, you know, exciting questions sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that part I really like. So sometimes I explain them and I see the wow uh, ness in their, you know, their okay. face that, that <laughs> makes me uh, feel okay or doing something sensitive. Mm. Right. And mm. sometimes they ask uh, uh, very good questions as well. That's it's a fresh perspective, right? So that always uh, uh, stimulates really good conversations, uh, definitely. So Ashok, I hope your research experience so far has been wonderful and will continue to be wonderful in the future as well. However, if you had three wishes to improve your research experience, what would you ask for? And I'm not promising anything here, okay? Just <laughs> make a disclaimer. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, um, as as an early career scientist, I think what I really wish uh, one is a funding, mm -hmm. more funding for recruiting a you know, wonderful people to work with mm -hmm. and do a wonderful science. Mm 
mm-hmm. and again um, a, a chance to share my research with uh, uh, people like you or even uh, the sign the, the researchers who work in my field uh, and even to the uh, to the uh, school children or in a broader public mm-hmm. yeah. so these okay. three things require only one <laughs> that is funding so i think i wish for that uh-huh. so funding then funding to do cool research like funding to recruit amazing talents funding to do research and third is uh funding to uh to 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 do outreach so basically funding yes. can we just go with the fact that just funding for everything that's your like funding 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 yes. um this is actually yeah, this is for the time being okay that's my for the time being yeah uh, next time you are on the podcast there might be some other things but for if, now if this I is think. fulfilled yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely and this is in alignment actually because we recently uh completed uh like we reached the milestone of interviewing more than 100 researchers like materials and nano scientists and we did like our own analysis of the wishes the three top three wishes of the of the materials and nano scientists and funding was like the top one like funding more funding better funding higher funding always so it's it's in alignment with 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 uh, our findings as well uh, i hope you will get the funding ashok this has been wonderful but before i let you go could you tell our listeners what can the followers like what can our followers the twitter followers expect in the week that you are taking over the real scientist nano twitter account right um yeah i think i will give a, a broad introduction to my research area in the first week uh, first day of the week mm. um and then followed by i would talk about my research journey probably some um, youngsters or you know early career uh, researchers probably find that Uh, a route what kind of you know possibilities exist for them to excel to the uh, independent positions mm-hmm. and then um, following we uh, day i probably uh, go into uh, my chemistry side of the research mm-hmm. as a chemist you know how we can design uh, nanographenes and nanomaterials and and then and then i'll come back to the uh, graphene nanostructures at uh, these 2d um, tunnels uh-huh. <laughs> yeah so i will talk about how we make these and what kind of uh, properties that we could see what kind of materials can go through so i i only talked about the helium gas going through it but we have other uh, exciting molecules of materials uh, going through uh, from ions to you know the macromolecules such as the dna going through such um to the tunnel and then how does it behave so i will share that kind of results mm-hmm. and at the end probably i will talk about um, other aspects uh, what can be done and uh, more into interdisciplinary or uh, a general topic into a 2d materials mhm mhm okay wow oh my god there is so many so much information coming our way can't wait to uh, to consume everything and learn everything about the uh, about the nano tunnels especially like graphene nano tunnels and what all can go through and uh, this is amazing thank you very much ashok and really really looking forward to having you on real scientist nano yeah, thank, thank you thank you pranthi and thank you real scientist team uh, for this uh, stage our pleasure thank you for listening to know more about us do visit our website thescienstalk.com and do consider giving us a review or a rating or follow depending on wherever you are consuming this content thank you very much mm-hmm.